Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. So we'll take five minutes of questions because then, then uh, we should start on time the next session and there's a break in between. But I mean, one interesting question uh, in the Q&A is, is basically uh, a twist around your amplification uh, effect here. So would it be possible with your data to check whether doves become more dovish and hawks become more hawkish in periods of high uncertainty? Um, so that's a very interesting question. Uh, in principle, uh, in principle, yes, because uh, and, and we do have some results uh, uh, at the individual level. So the data is granular. The data allows we observe statements at each individual level by section of the meeting, and we have constructed individual level policy preferences measures as well as uncertainty measures as well as sentiment measures so uh, in principle yes we can see whether uh, extreme uncertainty would lead to more divergence uh, of uh, views um, and separation essentially into stronger camps we could do that thank you another question is you know why do you not use the voting record to obtain information about policymakers' preferences in transcripts, uh, because there's a lot of you know uh, discussion which may give a wrong indication about the true preferences. So somehow the vote is really the final call. So so actually, uh, I'm not quite sure about vote being the the more uh, interesting measure. We know that voting is uh, th that dissents have been incredibly rare. Uh, over the sample that we study, uh, that uh, 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 so so there will not be a lot of uh, you know heterogeneity there. Uh, and what we show actually, what is very interesting about our pre uh, preference measure, is that it is not only predictive of you know current market-based uh, surprises. It is not only predictive of Romer and Romer shocks. It is actually predicting monetary policy stance going forward several quarters ahead. This is suggesting that the discussions in the transcripts, you know, are not just some misleading conversations. They actually present a lot of information about the intended path of the monetary policy going forward and are uh, really forward-looking, uh, which, which we found very interesting. Uh, in, in the context of us trying to understand where monetary policy uh, shocks actually come from. Thank you. And if I may, you know, abuse my chair privilege here. I mean, you, why do you not use uh, the part of the transcripts related to the financial market uh, presentation at the beginning? Because one could assume that it's exactly, you know, uh, when financial markets are volatile and you have uh, correlations breaking up, uh, liquidity being disrupted, that this can really have an impact actually on the Fed reaction function. And you know that financial market practitioners have this theory of the Fed put, yeah? So why do you leave that out? Yes, so so we could extend it um, to, to include the markets uh, section. And in fact, historically, uh, we did have, uh, we, we were constructing our indices using that information too. The only, they, they wouldn't change our conclusions. The only reason why we are not doing it right now is that the structure of the market section has changed uh, over time. And so we think that the important elements of the market uh, 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 deliberations about uh, what happened in financial markets will find their way to the discussion of economic conditions as well. So we find strong correlation between, you know, what would happen in the markets uh, section with what actually finds its way to the economy discussion. Okay, so it's a kind of warm up for the economy discussion. Yeah. Um, last question, maybe in order to leave time for the, the break, is you mentioned uh, that it is hard or almost impossible to distinguish pure uncertainty from risk. What about risk aversion? Yeah. So, and the, the, the question says it could be that uh, a given amount of uncertainty or risk can lead to longer discussions uh, in the FOMC meetings uh, when policymakers risk aversion is higher than usual, the risk aversion. No, absolutely. So uh, we we are not 
this we are not really uh, taking a stance or uh, of uh, the risk aversion of policymakers, but uh, with our sentiment measures, or at least in terms of inflation, what we establish is that a lot of the expression of uncertainty that happens in the meeting is actually expression of a worry about a really undesirable outcomes. And you could think about this as a proxy for uh, risk aversion of policymakers. And then obviously our subsequent measures of policy preferences uh, are showing that, uh, that this type of uncertainty that is uh, related with undesirable outcomes or concerns has strong effects on actual policy preferences. Thank you. Thank you very much. So on, on that note, I will um, close the session and thank you very much, um, Anna, for the, the paper and the great, um, the, the great Q&A.